Nearly 200 nations have begun online negotiations this Monday to validate a UN science report that will anchor autumn summits charged with preventing climate catastrophe on a planetary scale. World Meteorological Organization head Pateri Talas uh, addressed some 700 delegates by video conference. He said the latest findings of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, or IPCC, uh, needed to be endorsed to help prevent catastrophe on a planetary scale. A key G20 summit with climate on the agenda is slated for late October. This is ahead, of, of course, of the COP26 climate summit, which is to be held in Glasgow, Scotland. Record smashing heat waves, floods, drought across three continents in recent weeks, all amplified by global warming, have added pressure for decisive action. Let's get some comment and analysis. We're joined by Dr. Sharon George, lecturer on sustainability and the environment at the University of Kiel, joining us from Newcastle under Lyme. Good evening yeah. to you, Dr. George. Great to have you on the program. Um, looking at the news coverage over the weekend and the week previously, the flooding that we've seen recently. This weekend, it was London, of course. We saw Germany, we saw Belgium, th those kind of things. When you see that, what's it telling you about the situation so far in the light of what the IPCC is saying? Well, for, for many years now, scientists have been warning about the risks of ignoring rising levels of CO2. And we've only seen CO2 rise in one direction, and that's us. And the, the likelihood of these events, we scientists around the world have warned that the frequency of record-breaking, uh, you know, things like fires, droughts, floods, and the severity of storms will get worse. So what we are seeing now is those, those higher likelihoods playing out. The frequency of these events is, is increasing and the severity in, in, is increasing as well. And I think this is what, what ha people have struggled to make that connection between this invisible gas, the CO2, this intangible thing that, that we magically produce when we turn on a light, and an event, a flooding event that's halfway around the world. Uh, but now, because these events are becoming so much more frequent and they're happening in places where we don't expect, I think the events in Europe and the flooding really rocked people. That, that was a, a very severe event that wasn't expected. And I think it's making people start to notice the frequency of these events and think, well, this is what climate change looks like. Indeed, fatal floods then in Belgium and in Germany. We saw the underground flooded out uh, in London over the weekend. Uh, as you're saying, uh, parts of the Western Pacific coast of North America burning as we are talking. Uh, these things, uh, opposite, opposite extremes perhaps, but really indicative of, of the same problem that you're talking about. Um, I'm wondering whether the, the lockdown has had any kind of positive effect on the situation. Has the reduced activity helped in any way? Well... In one way, it's what it's done is, is shown us that we can adjust our behaviour on a massive scale very quickly. You know, the government told us when, if we were locked down that we were locked down. We did as we were told. And whole nations changed their whole working patterns and behaviours to, to deal with a, a, a global combined problem to find a, a solution. And I think that kind of gives us hope. Um, but at the same time, you know, the, the pandemic has made a shift behaviours away from things like um, air travel. We've been working from home more and maybe changing work patterns. But I think a lot of people are, are starting to revert back again. We've, we're using more things like plastic packaging and, and face masks and, and we're using different things um, that's, that's kind of counteracting those consumption habits. But I think that the, the thing that COVID has done is made us realise that we can very quickly shift to behaviour when, when we are faced by a, a combined challenge when, when we want to. Um, and I think that, is, that has to give us hope. Change can come, though, can't it? I mean, 100 years ago, where you are in that particular part of England, known as the potteries, which is the centre of the, uh, the, the, the pottery uh, plates, cups, teapots yeah. production if you like um, that it's stoke on trend i mean basically that was the veil there was just basically filled with smoke wasn't it there were so many kilns around working like that it's not the same yeah. anymore change is possible isn't it it is absolutely and you're quite right and and here was you know there was the the smog line i'm lucky enough to live on a high elevation that used to be 
a sanatorium where workers would be lifted out of the smog line, they would get better and then get shipped right back to those factories. Um, and But the, the whole problems that we see, the, the air quality issues, we're starting to tackle. So things like developments in electric vehicles will go some way to shifting us away from fossil fuel vehicles. They'll clean up our cities, but we need it to happen faster. Every single molecule of CO2 that we put into the air will stick around for, you know, 100 years doing its damage. So we every every day that we waste talking about these things and not taking action is going to have a, a long effect. So we need fast action. Sharon George, getting the message. We're on borrowed time, aren't we? Dr George, thank you very much for joining us. Mm -hmm. uh, Dr Sharon George, lecturer on sustainability and the environment at the University of Kiel uh, there in uh, central England. Stone Cold Trent, the areas we were talking about, used to be highly polluted, very different now. But as Dr George is saying, we're all uh, needed to really reduce our CO2 footprint and do it very quickly. We'll continue to watch that story, of course. Stay with us. More news to come. You're watching France 24.